so today we've come to the Isle of Sheffy to sh ah! I got hair in my mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Instagram influencing isn't always as glamorous as it seems. Behind every little square you scroll past is 100 outtakes, a professional photographer, and a team of people monitoring analytics and following engagement trends. To the untrained eye, soaring to fame and drastic amounts of cash has never been easier, with businesses spending an average of 1.6 billion US dollars on influencer advertising. Soaring to 800 million active users in 2017, the app is the advertiser's golden ticket to brand promotion, but how easy is it to tap into and why is such a risky strategy so appealing? Over the next three months, I'm diving in and joining the cult of influencers making a living out of the social network. Starting at a measly 100 followers, let's see how hard it really is to grow into a fully-fledged social celebrity and play with the business of insta-influencing. No Instagram influencing has been on the rise for many years now, with the app being used more as a business venture rather than a social sharing site, I wanted to find out why businesses have become so interested in using people as marketing tools rather than traditional ad campaigns. To do this, I plan to become an influencer myself. Now, you need 10,000 followers in order to be able to charge people for their posts. So that's my goal number at the end of this project over a period of three months. How hard can it really be? We're about to find out. Before attempting to work my way into the online influencer market, I headed to London to get some friendly advice from someone who knows the game pretty well. A fashion PA by day and Instagram influencer whenever she has a spare minute, Alex Rose has an impressive 11.3 thousand followers and has many brand collaborations under her belt. I was hoping she'd share some insight into how to establish yourself in such a saturated industry. So I started with like looking at what people do and trying to do my own pictures and I was like oh this just feels really strange like really odd to wake up and take a picture. Anyway as I started to I started to meet other bloggers and realised that there is definitely like a routine to what you do. I mean obviously not everyone has the routine but I then got into a rhythm of taking like five images like the week before so I could post them throughout the week so I'm not waking up and thinking oh my god I really need to post a picture like quickly do my makeup even though you're not going anywhere. I don't personally think you need to write on a blog to be an influencer. I bought myself a proper camera um, so it will either be a friend that takes them um, or a fellow blogger like we'll get together on a weekend and shoot like 12 outfits each um, which I can tell you is really exhausting. People think like, oh, well, all you do is stand and take a picture. I'm like, no. Because <laughs> there's like a hundred pictures for one. You need to find what your USP is, like what's your unique selling point? Like what is it that makes people want to follow you? Figure out what it is you want to portray. Um, and just make sure you're ready for that. With research suggesting that 82% of retailers use influencer marketing, I figured the next step was to chat to a business owner. Hopping on a plane home to Dublin, I was on my way to meet boutique owner Debbie Detling. Placing all trust in the studied fact that Instagram is the platform with the most influence over shopping habits, she opened DD2 Boutique last summer. For me, it's an incredible medium for marketing, um, for advertising. People are posting what, what they want, and so you can the, the profile is there, you just have to tap into that. And it's free. Like for me, it's incredible. It's so different to the normal way of advertising, where you're, you're kind of advertising blind, you don't know who it's reaching, but with um, Instagram and Facebook, if you're smart about it, like you can find out a lot of information about people and then you can target them directly. Do you feel like that's a road you would ever go down, like using people to market your yeah, of course I'd be stupid not to if they had like 10,000 or 8,000 or 15,000 followers or whatever amount of followers. It can't be bad. I, I think sometimes bloggers kind of overdo it. And like how would you feel about kind of giving away your clothes for free almost yeah. for these people to... Haven't done that yet. 
and I have to admit I don't like it and I think a lot of the, the people that are out there are really doing it for that reason I mean their houses are full of gifts that they're getting from different people um, yeah if they're smart about it, it it does work after picking Debbie's brain it was time to head back to Kent it was becoming clear that being an active influencer wasn't as easy as uploading a few selfies in an attempt to revamp my account I packed up my fancy new camera and headed to the beach white sand and blue clear sky the sea that looks like a lake and when we've lost paradise Different mindsets Back in London again, my next meeting was with a company almost tailor-made to fit the Instagram aesthetic. Candy Kittens was founded in 2012 by reality star Jamie Lang and Ed Williams. I was on my way to Argon Muse in Fulham to chat to digital marketing manager of the gourmet sweet brand Max Mahara about the consequences of a marketing plan centred around social influencers. Um, so yeah, we have this small group of influencers called the Sweet Squad who are girls who initially reached out to us to chat about our brand online and they were just like, hey, look, we want to do some reviews, can we have some free sweets and we're like okay well this kind of makes sense why don't we just get a group of these people and send them our sweets every single month so we guarantee one post a month from them influencer marketing has to be one pillar in a bigger marketing strategy rather than where you just hinge everything um a lot of i think a lot of brands might fall short there and they think if i pay an influencer to do this that's my marketing campaign just giving an influencer money to say, can you talk about candy kittens today, isn't the best way for us to, to sort of split our budget. I think marketing with influencers online is incredibly powerful. I think from where I'm sitting, I'm seeing increasing number of my peers moving away from doing that. I think people are moving away from like the super influencers that of the last couple of years, the whole marketing industry is kind of focused on. Um, I think there, there seems to be a bit of an industry trend looking at smaller influencers now, but having a wider group of them. Taking in Max's thoughts on the way the industry is shifting towards seeking out new talent, the next day I decided to drop into Pure London, a fashion trade show where Cosmopolitan magazine's editor-in-chief was giving a talk. Farah's store emphasised the importance of being active on the app. Instagram has been one of the most um, incredible uh, resources for me to lean on um, at Cosmopolitan. Uh, my fashion director, Amy Bannerman, um, is a real fiend for looking through Instagram and looking for things which are different and something which sparks conversation. Um, ultimately, everybody, you know, even magazine editors, want people to take a picture of their magazine and put it on their social feed. I'd really advise you to think very carefully about what you do with your social media because people are looking and we are taking notes and it is where we spot um, talent. Satisfied with what I was learning so far and with my own profile growing at a steady pace, it was time for my final trip to Ireland where my journey through the cogs of influencer marketing would end. But before I could gather my findings, there were a few more people to meet. First stop was a quick trip to University College Cork to talk to bloggers Clodagh Scanlon and Alva Woods about the difference between influencing and blogging. The blog definitely like would bring traffic to your mm -hmm. social media. I mean, like if I was just a random person who doesn't blog, um, like no one would have any reason to follow me. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm putting up and creating content all the time for blog related things, for outfits, lifestyle stuff. So. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are looking at my page because they want to see what I'm doing as a blogger. You know? I think it's so much better to be a blogger on Instagram these days because if you're like an influencer, it's kind of, there's so much kind of, not hassle about it, but like, oh, it's, just, it's, it's really annoying for bloggers because people, um, let's say who have an Instagram page and call themselves a blogger and don't have a blog, it's really unfair for people like us because we're writing amount, weekly, exactly, we're creating content weekly. The amount weekly. of time you put into an mm -hmm. actual blog and then just, just throw the name blogger down mm -hmm. on an Instagram page when you don't have anything linked, it's it's really disrespectful for people I like us. So. Yeah, like, like, I don't have a problem with the word influencer, exactly. lots of people do because I don't know why, because they think it's having an influence on someone, but I think it's just a word for 
Instagrammers without calling them bloggers because they don't have a website exactly. attached to it. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything wrong with being an influencer. But once you're just not going out there calling yourself a blogger mm-hmm. to try and get, I don't know, maybe free stuff or to try and get money, I don't believe in that. I think it's, yeah, yeah it's disrespectful to bloggers it's, who put in, like, it really, money it. It angers me so much because, like, the amount of time you put into blog posts, mm-hmm. taking pictures, writing, And even money. Like, exactly. even investing in good cameras, yeah. like, buying outfits regularly. Yeah, and products like, to review outfit, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, things like that, so... Yeah. I've seen where bloggers have for months had to chase brands Mm -hmm. and like to try and get the money that they've been promised for like sponsored posts or ad posts and all that. I think brands can take bloggers for granted like and think like oh I'll just send this to them and be grand. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll, like blow it up on their social media. They're going to absolutely love it. Yeah. And And some people think that bloggers just say like good reviews about products Mm -hmm. just because they want to get free things but it's like Yep. Some bloggers do and they're not the bloggers you should be following. The relationship between brands and influencers is complicated. Earning trust from followers is the key to a successful influencing career and working with the right company to fit your online image is key. Back in Dublin, I met with micro-influencer Zoe Elizabeth Palmer to see how she navigates collaborations. There has been a few brands, um, but I've said no to a lot of them because they're just not me and maybe that's why I'm kind of stuck in the same place for the past few months. It's just because I don't think I'd take on a brand that I don't like and tell people to go and buy something off them. I don't want to confuse my audience, let's say. So it's hard to try and find them, still kind of trying to figure out what my brand is before I start working with other brands. And once I hit maybe 3K, people started to write to me. You can tell, like, the more you start to grow, the more interest people have in you. So, and as well with, like, events and stuff, people want you to go to their event and they want you to take a photo at their event. And, like, it's kind of like a free marketing for them, too. So you kind of have to be careful with what events you're going to. You want to have, like, a trust with your followers and you want to, like, develop some kind of, like, brand loyalty with them. You just have to be careful because, especially if you're working with a certain brand, if I'm working with a... A jewelry brand, and I'm going to other jewelry events. It's kind of like, you know, you you can't you can't really. It's just confusing. We know so much more about bloggers now. Like, they share their whole life, whereas a celebrity or a model may not do that. So you've already got that trust. Try and be as unique as you can because, like, there's so many bloggers now. Like, every second person is a blogger. It's clear that marketing through people is a powerful tool, but it doesn't come cheap. With the average cost per post being 300 US dollars, brands need to be prepared to fork out the cash if they want a piece of the Instagram limelight. Dial Faro manages influencers online and does some influencing herself. When I first started off, of course, it's I didn't know about pitching and I was kind of a little embarrassed to pitch myself, to put myself out there as much as I do now. So it was the brands that would come to me firsthand and I had no issues about rates back then. Of course, now that the blog has grown and I have like a decent Instagram following, it's very hard to um, accept collaborations that are unpaid. It really kind of depends on the client as well and the item and if they want just an Instagram post or do they want like stories with it as well and a full blog post, it depends what content they're asking for. Sometimes if it's a global brand, I do tend to charge more because I work in an influencer marketing agency as well, so I know how to kind of measure stats and insights and stuff like that so I kind of I use that for my own benefit as well to measure not to overcharge so like say an Instagram post that I'd put up would reach average 8,000 people per se so I know how to charge it according to that minimum for one Instagram post for me would probably be 200 so it seems there's a lot more to the business of Instagram influencing than meets the eye After three months of trying, I only managed to gain 600 followers. Micro-influencers are being sought out to refresh an oversaturated industry as brands are getting tired of the same faces over and over. Making it to the top of the influencer ladder is no easy ride, but it sure does have its perks. The question now is, how long will the ladder stay standing?